We all have the ability to start a crowdfunding campaign, the ability to make a video and show our brilliant idea to the world. And although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times, not so much. And today, we're giving Kickstarter and Indiegogo a bit of a break. <laughs> Actually, guys, that's not exactly a good thing, because besides the odd video segment I have done in the past, like that one with the submarine, this video is easily going to be the hardest to hear. Yep, for the second time, we're going full pelt into the world of GoFundMe, the place where the very worst people on this disc we called Earth decide to hang out. And just to make it even worse than that, not only does every single segment in this video end in a bad way, with backers getting screwed over as always in this series, but on top of that, all five of these horrific tales end up in the grave too. This video isn't for the light-hearted among you all, you have been warned. Hi everybody, I'm DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room and this is 5 tragic GoFundMe campaigns that ended in the grave. And here we have it, the one that I think is the worst out of all of these segments I've ever made. The sad story of Jeffrey, the adopted son of Ernest and Heather Franklin. The date was March the 1st, 2017, around about midnight, Jeffrey Franklin, the adopted 16 year old son, was fast asleep in his bed. Heather, the mother, was out driving around, and the dad, Ernest, had started to light a wood stove to warm up the house when he realised that the dog had gone missing. Dropping his things to look for the mutt, he left his son at home asleep on his own and accidentally left the wood stove door open, and as you may have guessed, a fire broke out, burnt down the house, and killed the adopted son in the process. Upon Ernest's return and seeing the blaze, he ran to his neighbour's house to call 911 at about 1.14 in the morning. And that was that. The house was ablaze and as stated, Jeffrey, the 16-year-old adopted son, died during this tragic event. A neighbour, who I assume was the same one that Ernest woke up during the blaze, simply just wanted to help and he was the one that actually set up a GoFundMe campaign to help the grieving family in their hour of need, and close to $11,000 was raised doing just that. That same neighbour handed over the money and continued to help by looking after the family's cows, chickens, goats and two dogs that he had been doing since all of this happened. Seems to me like a pretty top guy using the more charitable side of GoFundMe for the right reasons. However, and here comes the twist ladies and gentlemen, it is believed that both Ernest and Heather, influenced after watching the movie Manchester by the Sea, were the ones that started the fire on purpose and that it was done to cover up the killing of Jeffrey, who was actually already deceased before the fire broke out due to an autopsy not showing any signs of smoke in his lungs. Now at this point in time, I gotta say it's all alleged as Heather's trial is actually still ongoing. But Ernest, yep. He was found guilty of these charges very recently in court and is now awaiting a sentence of 25 years to life in prison. Looking back, the same neighbours that set up the campaign stated in an interview that Heather had not even asked about her adopted son during the blaze and Ernest had to be forced back from running into his own house by authorities. And all of this was just a lie. They was also incredibly apologetic for not being able to get the money back to everybody that did donate and said that they felt that their whole family had been taken advantage of. We just wanted to be supportive and do what we could to help. Thankfully, yet again in this instance, GoFundMe actually gave refunds to everybody that donated.
This is Melissa. And you know what Melissa likes? She likes cats. No, 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 not like you and me like cats. I mean, she really likes cats. This woman is obsessed. You know Eleanor Abernathy, aka the crazy cat lady from The Simpsons? Well, this is her in real life. I love animals, I have my whole life. I speak up for them, I am their voice. Okay. As you would have no doubt already predicted, Melissa had quite the collection of cats herself. Around about 50 of them in fact. But she didn't stop there because she also ran an illegal cat rescue center out of her own home. Now if you're like me, you probably don't know exactly what makes a cat rescue center illegal and in a video like this, your mind is probably racing. Well, it's not that horrific to be fair. She wasn't profiting from helping these cats. In fact, I'm sure she did help out plenty of them. What makes this non-profit organization illegal though is the fact that she hasn't registered it as an official charity, but was still aiming to get as much money as she possibly could via donations and crowdfunding. Which brings us to the first local fundraiser, which sadly I don't have much information on. However, it was for only $500 to pay off the fees needed to become an officially registered charity. Whether this got funded or not, sadly I can't prove, but regardless, she never did fill in the forms anyway and continued to run her operation her way, constantly starting up crowdfunding campaigns which all failed. And on top of this, literally begging for money non-stop on her own Facebook page as she refused to turn down any cat that came her way. Now just to paint even more of a picture for you, as this woman became more and more obsessed with her cats, they were constantly filling up her family's home. As you would expect, the house was becoming pretty damn filthy, and on top of that, Melissa was a bit of a hoarder too. Oh yes, she also enjoyed the occasional prescription medication binge too. Now to get to the part that you're waiting for. I'm sure your mind is trying to figure out what the big twist is here. Is it the cats? Did they die? Well, yes, some of them did, but according to reports, that's quite common during kitten season, as big litters don't always make it. Especially in circumstances like these. Nope, the big twist here is actually quite a bit worse, as it actually involves her husband, Frank. And this is Frank. Everybody say hi to Frank. Back in February of 2007, Frank here went missing and Melissa reported this to the police. Look, she even posted up an image of him on her Facebook, which up to this point only ever had pictures of, you guessed it, her cats. My husband wouldn't hurt anyone. He was generous. He was nice. He was nice to everyone he met. Police came along and gave a little search of their horrific looking home and besides a crowbarred open safe which she claims was done by robbers that she forgot to report, the police got suspicious so they got a warrant to thoroughly search the premises which is when they found blood deep in the bed and blood on the ceiling. His body was also found shortly after about 20 miles away in his own car. Frank was murdered two gunshots to the head. With the evidence against her, Melissa admitted that her and pretty much the only family member that would stay in contact with her, her own son, worked together to commit the crime with him doing the shooting and her doing the cleaning. And obviously, they both ended up in prison. And that was the tragic end of that. But then, two years later, she sent a letter to the judge from her jail cell confirming that she was in fact the only killer and it had nothing to do with her son, who she had framed for the murder. She did it all alone. <laughs> God damn, what an evil but super caring for cats lass. Even though she lived in absolute squalor and most people that knew her hated her, her cats for the most part were found to actually be in good shape. No thanks to the multiple crowdfunding campaigns that she attempted to start, most of which are completely hidden nowadays after the trial, so there's no way of knowing how many she actually started. But she obviously didn't know what she was doing, and the obsessive hoarder and drug taking ways didn't help in any way, shape, or form. Remember the broken into safe? 
Yeah? Well, that was done by her to get into her husband's hidden medication. Turns out that this whole situation was just getting way too much for him. He was sleeping on the sofa, his house was getting completely destroyed by the cats, and he tried to end it all with her via divorce, and well, I'm sure you can work out the rest. A pretty horrific tale, I'm sure you'll all agree, and the sort of tale that's so crazy and twisted that you just can't make it up even if you tried. Oh yeah, there is one more thing. Frank was also an imperial wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, and Melissa was a member too. It's a crazy world we live in, guys. Okay, so this one technically doesn't end in the grave, but instead it starts in one. Tabitha L. Photo was a young girl who sadly gained quite a bit of a drug addiction, as did her sister before her. Her sister made it through rehab, and as far as I can tell, did it with flying colours. However, Tabitha, well, she did too at first, but then on a kind of a relapse, she started taking what she thought was Kratom, and after her second use, she died. A sad time for all, as you would expect, especially considering that not only was she on the road to recovery, but she was also starting to help others in a similar situation. And this is when the GoFundMe campaign comes into play. This is Crystal Gently, and she was a close friend of Tabitha, and whilst the family was grieving, she decided to help by setting up a campaign that would help pay for some of those funeral costs. This was something she did with the blessing of Tabitha's mother, and as expected in situations like this, it did well, gaining over $5,000 before Tabitha's mum asked her to stop it just before the funeral, and Crystal did just that. But that was the end of the communication between them. Tabitha's funeral came and went without any sign of Crystal or the money, and when Tabitha's mother called GoFundMe, they confirmed that the account had been emptied by Crystal. And she was quickly arrested for theft by deception. Tabby was betrayed. That was her friend. You can't go any lower in life, I think, than to do something like that. That was the lowest. Just made it harder. You know, it just made things go deeper than deep. They were already at their saddest points, but to do what she did was even deeper. I couldn't believe how pathetic she would be to do something like that. You know, it was just, I couldn't believe it. I mean, again, going with what we went through and then to have to even think of something like that, you know, and, and then to have to deal with something like that. Eventually, Crystal ended up going to court and the 15 years expected life sentence that she could have faced was eventually agreed to be a maximum of only 12 months instead if she admitted to doing what she did which she did and even though her attorney argued that she'd gone through enough having lost her job and getting plenty of internet hate because of all of this she was also homeless at the time and was no longer in a relationship too by the way the judge still handed her jail time but slightly reduced down to six months with another six months suspended for a period of five years and during that time she would be on probation and all of the money had to be paid back during this time and get this, GoFundMe themselves, probably due to the crazy amount of negativity, decided to stump up the cash themselves to give to the family as originally intended. You gotta be careful who you really trust. I never thought she would have done this to not only us, but to Tabitha. Tabitha just passed and pretty much 12 hours later she opened a GoFundMe. So she knew what she was doing and that's what hurts. Oh yes, she has also been banned from using crowdfunding websites again. But I think that one's a given. Okay. 
So in my attempt to make this episode ever so slightly less morbid, I think it's probably best that I do one of these segments that actually has nothing to do with death at all. But how are you going to do that, Daniel? <laughs> well, simple. By talking about people that pretend they are going to die. A lot of this episode came from the website Go Fraud Me, and on that website there is an entire section based on people that pretend to have cancer in return for money. <laughs> Can you believe it? The worrying thing is how many people actually get away with this stuff. I suppose it's times like these it's probably best you don't think about it, regardless the length these scammers go to, and I'm talking true, 100% bad boy scammers go to to trick people into believing them, is completely crazy. And the one I'm going to be chatting about today is this chick right here, 35 year old Alicia Perini. Someone that said she had cancer, but didn't. Besides me telling you that she earned £28,000 doing just this, that should really be enough for this segment, right? Move on, Daniel, I hear you say. Well, let's see how far this chick, and possibly her boyfriend, took it. One day, Alicia claimed that she had a brain tumour and asked her boyfriend to set up a GoFundMe as she only had months to live. He did, and the money was raised as stated. However, when looking at the Turtle Boy Sports blog, it appears she went even further with this too on Facebook. Firstly, she got a tattoo. <laughs> yes, this lass actually got a tattoo saying, Cancer may have started the fight, but I will finish. Um, it, I presume. I just want to say one last time that this was all fake. She actually admitted that the GoFundMe was a fake. <laughs> Nice artwork though, right? Here's another post from Facebook claiming that she's riding out the storm after a chemo session. Now this is where I'm a little unsure, the boyfriend didn't know what was going on. Look, he's right here, I mean it's not impossible that she was that cunning, but I have my doubts, but hey, who knows. Here she is being strong and powerful as her hair starts to fall out and she continues being a free-spirited lass with a mohawk. Oh no, not puppy puke. And the doctor thinks it might be colon cancer? I mean, this might be true, but then again, look who's writing it. Oh yeah, by the way, that guy, that's her father, who actually did sadly pass away the same year that this was all going on, as seen here by his online obituary. Wait, what does that final sentence say? Donations may be made to support his daughter Alicia's medical fund as she undergoes cancer treatment at www.gofundme.com forward slash Alicia dash Perini's dash medical dash. Oh, that is low. <laughs> like, really low. Wow. Okay, let's continue. Here's another post claiming that she has to double her dosage on the next fake chemo session. And here's another post showing her fighting power via one of those annoying e-cards things. Here she is, fully head shaven now, eyebrows and all. And finally, here she is at 3 o'clock in the bloody morning, just Facebook checking in at the hospital, which police eventually rang and confirmed she was never a patient at when this all came out. Maybe it's just me loving sleep too much, but my God, that is dedication. Anyway, back to the boyfriend. Now as stated, in reports I've seen, he was apparently none the wiser. I mean, heck, he even got inked with their names too. He also flew with her to Chicago. Oh man, I do love me some Giordano's pizza. Oh wait, here's another trip over into Scotland. Now they're in Florida. Now they're in Costa Rica. And finally, he goes alone to Massachusetts. Well, I think it's safe to say that it's pretty obvious where all the money went, right? Like I said, this makes it hard for me to believe that he didn't know about it. But then again, his own mother did donate $5,000 herself. <laughs> Whoa. It's still early days for this one, sadly, guys, so the sentencing of this eyebrowless Alicia is yet to be set. GoFundMe have yet again refunded all the backers of this campaign, which is obviously good. And that's the end of that. 
Oh well, at least she'll always have that tattoo to remind her of the time that she screwed all of her families and friends over. <laughs> God. For this one, the one that will easily be the worst for the vast majority of people watching, yes, the worst, we need to go back to January 22nd, 2018 in New Jersey when a young 24-year-old named Reed M. Herjo was caught speeding by the Medford Township Police Department. However, the reason for speeding was actually not all that bad. Reed was worried about his young 14-year-old German Shepherd as he was involved in a hit and run by an ATV. Reed explains that whilst he was walking his dog, the hit and run occurred, so the police obviously didn't charge him and he very quickly went off to the vet for help. Turns out those injuries were pretty bad, as you would expect, and therefore the GoFundMe entitled Atlas's Emergency Surgery was set up, and as expected, 693 pledged a combined total of $14,065. However, Reed wasn't exactly telling the truth. <laughs> You see, even though Reed was found in groups on Facebook, such as the German Shepherd Discussions Group, raising awareness of his campaign, the vet that was looking after the pup contracted police to discuss the injuries because they didn't add up. It was very obvious that the injuries simply couldn't have been made by a hit and run. So the police investigated, and it turns out that the vet was right. It turns out that Reed was inflicting these injuries himself over a six week period and to just make this even worse, he was profiting from it as well. As these injuries continued and police questioned him, the ridiculous reason he gave was that Atlas had fallen down the stairs and he'd fallen down a hill. But still, this obviously didn't add up. And sadly, on February the 3rd, with the pup still being under Reed's care, Atlas died of suspicious circumstances. And one month later, on March 28th, Reed was charged with third degree animal cruelty and third degree theft by deception. Now, regarding jail time, well, that's actually up for debate in this particular segment. Obviously, all of this coward social media channels have long gone after a name change to Melvin Johnson, but after reading several comments on Facebook, there is a strong indication that he ended up in the slammer as a result of this. However, I can't be 100% sure. GoFundMe ended up refunding all of the donators to this horrific tale, and well, that's it. Easily one of the worst campaigns I've ever seen whilst doing these videos. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out this rather morbid kick scammer video. Don't worry, I've got a very <laughs> upbeat one for the next video. Uh, but anyway, yes, big thanks to this video sponsor, as usual, Player One Clothing. Be sure to go over to their website for all of your movie related and gaming related garments. And of course, if you want to go and support me via Play Asia by getting any of the games that you see on the screen, then please do click the links below for that. The ones all on here are all free shipping. And if you use code SGR, you you get 5% off. But anyway, let's get over to those Patreons. Do a big special shout out going to Gary Pinkett, that Retro Video Gamer, Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Hayward, Christopher Turnbull, Phil Lowlands, Tomek Rabowski, Mr. Vestek, Retro to Next Gen, Hawk89, Dina, Robertson Dunn, Lefty Intrigued Gaming, Abby Morris, Tim Labonte, Asobi Quang DX, Tim Lunn, Hernanaz, Pixels Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Red the Beard, Conrad Constantine, Pretendo 64, Kareem the Elephant. Casey Garner, Blitz Hedgy, King Link Reviews, Gemma at Mr. T-Shirts, Dan Petit, Primetime Penny Sleeve, Mike H. Fell, Lucas Softail, Ye Old Hamburger, Gregory Arden, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Solix Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus Kingamer, Cut Tindall, June, The Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Portflo G, and of course, Petty Mew. If you want to get your name shouted out, get your name shown, come and see what I'm working on, and come and join the exclusive rooms on Discord and see plenty of other updates. 
then please do click the link that you see on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever you prefer. But for now, this is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time.